Good morning. Good morning, Rabbi. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We missed you yesterday. Yes, I missed you too. I'm here in the. I'm sitting here in the HQ of Chabad of the Berkshire Mountains, and uh, had a terrific Shabbos with the uh, with the shliach here, Rabbi Levi Volovic. The seeing it's uh, awe inspiring to see the work of Chabad around the world. Like I said, Friday there is ir uh, mikolot that has to be built for every yid, and there is thousands of them around the globe. And here is the station in the Berkshire Mountains. If you, uh, there is uh, on a regular day here in the summer, there's hundreds of from people. They also they provide kosher food for the people that come to the resort. It's called Jiminy Peak. It's a very popular place that people come. So they have a kosher stand there with pizza and stuff, and they have minyanim and they have minyanim here all uh, summer. They have uh, packed. In the winter, it's quiet. In the winter, is the real work when they makad of uh, the yidelach that are the locals. And, uh, you know, it's cold here in the winter, and you got to make it warm in their hearts. Okay. So, uh, thank you very much uh, for Pettits for sending out the, um, sending out the Mata Mekoymas. Really appreciate it. Okay. Can you hear me clearly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. The first uh, Shaila was that uh, Shaila that I received this week, someone asked like this. He's renting a uh, first floor of a uh, three family home and uh, the owner of the property is Jewish now, uh, the uh, second floor was just rented out to uh, 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 an, a family, noch, a famous family from a different country uh, who, uh, who uh, were taking refuge here in the United States of America. And uh, in, the front, uh, in the front lawn sends me a picture. It's a, it's a big fat getchke sitting there in the front lawn, and he asks, what should he do? Is he chayef to do something? Is not chayef to do something? And then he says, if, if they will be told to take away their, uh, uh, says, he says, I don't own the house. Can I tell them? Can I not tell them? Should I tell the landlord? Is the landlord chayef to do something about it? And what happens if, they're obli- if we tell them they have to take away their big fat statue? And then comes Hanukkah, and I put the note in my window. I usually have a nice electric minute in the window. What uh, then? They're gonna they're gonna have complaints. So, what 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 to do? So it happens to be that the shailos dove beita matoiv. The Ebrister helps. They use it sometimes in the middle of the week. I guess the shailo has to do with the parsha. It's mamish this week's parsha. And if you're looking at the Maram Mekaymas, let's start with the Rambam. The Rambam in Hilchas Avoy the Zara. The beginning of Pedic Seven. It's a mitzvah to destroy and all the things that serve the and all the things that were made for the Avodah You should destroy all the places. So it's a mitzvah say in this week's parsha. And it says and it says Rambam holds that it's not only the Avodah Zorah, but also the Misham She Avodah Zorah. Also the Misham She Avodah Zorah. And also the Nasa Bishvila. When it comes out of Yisrael, you have to run after it and destroy it and smash it anywhere in the land. You don't have to run after it. Every place that you conquer it. You have to destroy every Avodah Zorah that's there. Again, this week's parsha. So, in Eretz Yisrael, what's the difference between Eretz Yisrael? So, <coughs> you might say Eretz Yisrael, you're obligated to conquer every place anyway. But the the Goen, the Vilna Goen, the Gro, and uh, it brings and I showed it in the copies of the Maram 
that no, that in Eretz Yisrael, even a place that wasn't conquered yet, if Ayit sees Avay Dezorah, he is chayv to take a hammer and smash it to smithereens. He has to break it. Chutz it's only if Ayit conquered that land, so then he's chayv to eradicate all the Avay Dezorahs from that land. If he didn't conquer it, he's not chayv. Beretz Yisrael, the Metzuv, the Lirde Facharein. Beat the Metzuv, the Lirde Facharein, the Chutz Lord, you're not mechayv to run after it, the Chutz Lord. Okay, very nice. Uh, so the question here is, and, and before, I, before I continue, just uh, quickly, let's learn, uh, let's read uh, what uh, the Panoruch uh, is and the Maltz and the Manamakaymas. It's near the day. You have to destroy it. And there's also a bracha to make. And a chutz lord to add a baruch Hashem, a baruch Hashem, a baruch Hashem, a kedem alchelam, shalker avod zora, ma mokum azeh. And then a person says, "Kshem shenakum ma mokum azeh, kach to opker, mekol mekaymas v'teim belev avdecha, love day and love decha." Just brought in his brachas, and as I'm learning Rambam, we just learned it recently in Rambam his brachas. So the question here is, when a person, the landlord, owns this house, but on one hand, you could say it's not, it's not a land that was nichbash al yudei Yisrael. In general, you could ask a question. We haven't found that Yidin had, uh, had made a point if they rented a space to Agoy in the 2,000 years where in Golus, in the places where the Nazarim live, that, uh, to te- that there shouldn't be any shes if he had him. Uh, either it's an avodah or it's an So why is it that we see that he didn't, uh, that he didn't, uh, didn't, uh, didn't break shes if he him? They didn't uh, go around breaking gechkes in the 2,000 years in Golas. The simple answer is, uh, and the simple answer is two parts to it. Um, Number one is this is not one of the three mitzvahs, which is Yehorik Val Yab. And uh, for you to go break, smash up an Avadazara, Shesev Yedev in Europe, even today in Europe or the United States, it's Bekoch Nefesh Mamish. Because uh, the Goyim will not understand the intent. And the Goyim, this becomes Sakonis Nefoshis. If it's not Sakonis Nefoshis for this year, it'll be an Sakonis Nefoshis for another year. So there's no question that that's Bekoch Nefesh. And it's not one of the three mitzvahs. And, uh, and therefore, the, the, therefore, he didn't, didn't do it. The second explanation is also simple, as, a simpler even explanation, with less lump this even, and that is uh, something we spoke about many times. Mesidus nefesh means like this: a person could say he walk, he'll go up to the observatory deck on the Empire State Building and jump down. Mesidus nefesh, he'll jump off the Empire State Building. Well, you say that a person, he's standing on Manhattan on the, on the concrete uh, floor and he'll jump up onto the Empire State Building. You can't, you can't do that. You can't do that. It's not Shaykh. It's not Shaykh. It's not Shaykh. You can jump off. You can't jump on. So in 2000 years, he didn't want to go. It wasn't Shaykh. You're going to break this uh, the second one. Besides the fact that it's not Shaykh. I'll be the whole day. So the fact that Yidin didn't do it for 2,000 years is Nishkanayim. The mitzvah is that if a person finds an Abayi Dezor, it's in his hand, in possession, he has to smash it. And if he conquers a land, he has to eradicate and smash all the Abayi Dezor. Now, if I own a property and someone's there, and the, so, as I said, with the Shashivad, we see that Yidin didn't uh, smash Shashivad in, the, in these countries. Why? Because uh, it, and even today, if Chas V'Shalom gets out, you never know. It's dangerous. But when someone comes from a different country, from uh, from the eastern countries, and they bring a big fat Avod Zara and they put it in the front lawn, and this is your property, and you befeidish have the right to say that I have a nice lawn, and I don't want uh, this big fat uh, big fat cement piece sitting in my lawn in my in my garden. Um, so. 
So uh, definitely it's, uh, it, it's incumbent on the Yid that owns the property to call the Goy and tell him that he has to remove that big fat thing. Now, well, maybe, you might yeah. argue that this is not absolutely a mitzvah say. The mitzvah say is only if you conquer the land. Uh, but uh, but it, what's the difference if you conquer the land? You have to smash it. So here you own the property. So maybe you can't smash it, but you can tell the guy, I don't want it there. Move, remove it from the front lawn. You can't have it there. So I told him that he should tell the, the Yiddish owner that he should call the tenant. And if you can, uh, it, I don't see any uh, coming out of it. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a, it's a Eastern Avoidazara. It's not popular in America. And try to get them to take it away because it's offensive to the other, to the other uh, tenants. And if uh, pay, uh, comes Hanukkah, uh, he feels that he can't put up his electric light on the window. No, no. So he won't put up the electric light on the window. And then, it's good, they can go out okay. and watch the kids. It's not good. So, you have a question? Yeah, I was with uh, my mother a few months when she had, uh, I'd, I'd like to ask a favor, everyone that's listening to the sheet, if you could please put yourself on mute. Thank you very much. Okay. So, uh, we have a lot of work today. I want to get straight to the second question. And uh, then I want to get to the first question, which happens to be very good time. One second. Yeah. Yeah, I was good. <laughs> second question. Someone asked me, called me this week. Um, okay. He can get. Uh, Hello? Check in the middle. Okay, I take it. <laughs> How is the, uh, the new business doing? People calling. I don't see advertising anymore. Okay. Someone called me up asking a shy. Maybe it's important. So put yourself on mute, please. Hello. Tasson, good morning. How are you? Are you? Yes, could you please put yourself on mute? I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Don't worry. Sorry. Okay, don't worry. Second question. Someone had called me, he can get a loan, SBA loan, 150,000 K, and um, he really wants to start a business. And uh, his mother, based on her business and based on her tax return, she can get a SBA loan for $150,000. And uh, she doesn't mind if he'll take the loan. It's, uh, it's you know, 3.5%, it's a very good loan. You don't have to pay it for the first 12 months, and then you have to you pay it slowly over 30 years. And uh, he wants to use that 150,000 to invest in a business. Uh, this is a great opportunity. Where is he going to get capital? So he wants to know if this is kosher or not kosher. So Baruch Hashem, he called me when I could still help him in a very simple way. So the answer is it's not kosher unless you make it kosher. Um, I sent you the Mana Makaimas, but I'm not going to, the time is very short, but the bottom line is like this. The bank knows, knows only them and the mother. They don't know him. He's not an existing entity. He doesn't have the credit. He doesn't have the, uh, the W2 or 1099 or Section C or whatever it is that they, he doesn't have the document supporting that uh, he can get 150K. She does. So the loan is between her and them. Now, the api alochid is two separate loans. A yid got a loan from a goy for ibis, and now he's passing it, the yid number one is passing it on to yid number two. And that's mamish alone with ribis. It's a ribis ktsutsa. It's also the rais. It's also mid the rais. The thing was that he, the mother already got the 150,000 in her account, but she still didn't transfer it to his account. So I sent him a shtar heter iske to make an iske between him and his mother. And uh, his mother anyway wants a note from him saying that he's going to repay the loan, which this was a terrific, uh, so it's a, a, a So his mother this way will have a document in her hand that uh, he has to repay the loan. And in the meantime, it's a heter iske. So he's getting the money from her, but as an iske, 
He's getting the money from his, the SBA loan that's in his mother's account. Well, before she transfers it, uh, he and her and then she will sign on the ISCA and therefore it will become a heter ISCA and therefore it will be kosher to get the SBA loan from his mother. They shall help him, they should have atzlocha and invest the money and see a lot of atzlocha and be able to do a lot of mitzvahs and ma'asim with uh, with his atzlocha. Third child. Um, we have uh, we have a minig in base Menachem Mendel that we learn uh, something in Aloha before Mincha. Unfortunately, this year because uh, we were uh, we were very day in COVID, and uh, we couldn't so we couldn't uh, know that story with the masks, so we didn't have it. Someone asked if we could start it again, and I said yes because it seems that um, it's winding down and things are safer. Baruch Hashem, we started last week. And uh, it, it, we really had a terrific run on this. Uh, we've been doing every year a few prokim of, uh, uh, even though we did already the Gemara and we did the Shulchan Aruch, but we dedicated in the summer to do the Alter Rebbe, the Seder Bechas The Alter Rebbe wrote a kid set of all Bechas in, thir- in he, like an encyclo- in like a, an encyclopedia. And uh, he, he distilled it into 13 uh, prokim. And uh, we've been doing uh, in the summer before Mincha, slowly but surely we've been going through the entire, we did already by now, uh, we did the uh, five prokim. We did the last three and the first two. So now we're holding Peter Gimel. And uh, last week I gave an introduction about it. And uh, we'll talk about it today uh, to just to whet the appetite on this. It's about the sugya. This whole entire pedic is about the sugya of Iker Vatofu. Why is it such a complicated sugya, Iker Vatofu? Because in life also, it's a complicated sugya. The din is that culture Iker, the Mishnah says, culture Iker Vimen Tvela, Mavarach Likar Poiter Satvela. But sometimes in life, you have to figure out what's the Iker and what's the Tofu. What's the Iker and what's the Tofu? I'll give you an example. Um, I was this. I was once in an ice cream store. This is years ago. A choshev kol younger man. I see him sitting. The two kids are. He bought them ice cream, and he's sitting with a little gemara and learning. Now I don't know a person's cheshboyness, but uh, I know what I need to take the lesson that I need to take for myself. It felt very wrong to me, and it taught me a lesson how I should be with my kids. You know. Sometimes we have to, it's not always clear to figure out what's Iker, what's Tafel. I could spend today, the day I could sit and learn another Daf Gemara and another Toysvis, or I could go play basketball with my, uh, with my children. What's Iker and what's Tafel? Say, Iker in life, to learn another Daf Gemara. But th- maybe the Iker in life is to be Machanach your children right now. And if they need you to go play basketball with them, maybe that's, maybe that's the Iker right now for you to do. I can sit in London yet. It's not a pedic rambam. I have to go uh, t- uh, swimming with my uh, children, teach them how to ride a bike or how to go roller skating or rollerblading, take them on a motorcycle, on a boat. It's complicated. I mean, listen, you know, what's Ikan and what's Tafel in life? And it, sometimes it's a, it's a complicated sugya to figure out the story with the Motul, the Chernobyl, and the Tzdoka. And uh, it's it's a uh, it's a complicated thing sometimes to figure out what's what's the iker and what's the tofu. What I have to focus on right now, and what's the iker tafkid for me right now in life, and what's the tofu. And maybe sometimes the iker right now is to, uh, to is to play basketball with my son. And maybe right now the iker is to teach my daughter how to ride a bike. Maybe right now the ikir is to, to, to go out on a walk in the forest with, uh, with, with my spouse. You can share a little bit of light divrei Torah, but also talk milza de bedichas vat chirabon also. It's a, it's, a, it's a sugya. It's a difficult sugya. You have to fi- we have to figure it out. We can't fool ourselves uh, on one way or the other way. We can't uh, exaggerate one way or the other. It's a tightrope, but we have to know at every point in our life, what's the Iker and what's the Tafel? Because we have to focus our energy on the Iker. The brach we make on the Iker. And the Mela part is the Tafel. So I wanted to... Uh, the beginning of Peter Gimel, uh, but I'd like to cover a few shadows. 
which is things that are mixed. Uh, for a fruit salad, a fruit salad that, uh, for example, you cut up, you chop up bananas and apples. Uh, and other fruits, grapes, bananas, apples. Uh, today there's a lot of vegetable salads that have some fruits in it, or fruit salads that have some vegetables in it. So then you have for breakfast, you have, a, for example, uh, you'll have a, a yogurt and uh, you, people will dump inside granola and berries. So what what bracha? Do you make three brachas or one bracha? You make a shahakal on the on the on the yogurt and a dama on the granola and a eights on the berries or the other maybe the other say that you make a eights and then a, a dama then a shahakal or one bracha. How about fruits and jello? How about chocolate covered raisins and chocolate covered nuts? One bracha or two brachas? And how about um, uh, cereal and milk? Cereal and milk. One bracha, two brachas. So this is what I want to cover today. And as I said, this is sort of an introduction. The Mitzvah Shem will start learning uh, this Shabbos before Mincha. We'll start uh, learning the Fnim, the Alter Rebbe, Seyed uh, Bechzanan, and Pei Gimel. So as I said, the Mishnah says, Kol she'ikar v'imetfeilo, mevorach al-ikar repoiter es atfeilo. You make the brach and the ikar, and you pat the tofu. It's interesting, Pilpul, that the Chaznish has, in Simenor Echaim, Simen Chavzayim, he says, what is the pshat? Is the pshat is that the tofel has no bracha or the birch is pat is the tofel? Chaznish says it's the, it's the latter. And the birch is pat is the tofel. That's why we find that if he, when he made the bracha and the ikar, he didn't have in mind the tofel. It, 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 he has to make a separate bracha on the top. Like in the story of the Mishnah, when the Mishnah says, So uh, the Mishnah says, you make a bracha on the Malis. The Gemara says, how could, how could this be? That uh, the Gemara says, it was Peter's Genoise. According to Toysos, he ate these very sweet fruits. And because it was so much mesiko, so sweetness, his heart, they got the chalishus. And therefore, he has to eat something, uh, something sharp to take away the chalishus. But once he ate a jalapeno pepper, his mouth is on fire, so he eats a piece of bread. So uh, Toysva asks, why, do we, why, why are you saying the mevorach ha-maliach of poiter as a pas? Say mevorach ha-lapetis and poiter all the rest. So Toysva says, we're talking about in the case that uh, he made that he that he that uh, he ate the pedas ginoisen in a different place, and he didn't realize that he's going to have such a chalisha salave. And then he went, he made a shinu malkim, or he didn't have in mind. And then they they brought him the jalapeno pepper and the bread. So therefore, the bracha of the pedas didn't pat it. But usually, talking the bracha of the pedas would pat if the main thing was to eat the pedas ginoisa, the sweet fruits. So the bird of priya eats pat is the pedas, and then the pat is also the jalapeno pepper and also the bread that comes later. So, but what's the chidush here? So, according to the Chaznish, you could say the chidush here, the Mishnah, why the Mishnah said it didn't like this, well, the Mishnah should have said, you make the bracha and the pedis, and the mela, you pat it also, the jalapeno pepper and the bread. But the, 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 the chidush of the Mishnah is to tell you that when the zikr of a tofel, the birch is a ikr, it goes on the tofel, not that the tofel doesn't need a bracha. Therefore, Taka, if he had the, the pedis genoiso, the sweet fruits in one house, and then he ate the jalapeno pepper and the bread in the second house, he has to make a bracha, a separate bracha. Alamai, because the bread is in tofel, the jalapeno pepper, he makes a adom on the jalapeno pepper and doesn't make a moitzi on the bread. Okay. So based on the Chaznish, you can explain very nicely the, what's the Chiddush here in the Mishnah and how to understand the Toysos. Okay. Before I get to the Shaila, an, another very important Kuda that seems to me a very important key to understanding the Sugya of Iker Vetofel. And after that, we'll get to the question, as I said, of a fruit salad that has vegetables, vegetable salad that has fruits, uh, granola and berries dumped into uh, your breakfast bowl, of uh, leban or uh, Greek yogurt, uh, jelly with pieces of fruit inside, um, chocolate covered um, raisins, or chocolate covered uh, almonds, chocolate covered anything, uh, cereal milk and so on. The Mishnah says, it's a, just a few words. The Mishnah says, The Rambam and the Tur and the other Rishayim say that there's two types of Iker There is, Iker vetofel 
there's tefillah hamurevis and tefillah she'en hamurevis. There is the, the case when they're not mixed, which is a classical case of the Mishnah, that he ate jalapeno pepper and his mouth is on fire and now he eats, he eats a piece of bread. So he makes adama on the pepper and he doesn't make a moitzi on the bread. He's mevorach ala But they're not mixed one with the other. And then there is when two things are mixed with each other. Mevorach ala Now how do they know the, the, the din of, of when two things are mixed? It's a, it's a little bit of a, a kvetch in a gemara. The gemara says that Abba Shmuel, the beginning of Kate's Mavarch and Amitavai, Kol Shiyesh Moi, Machameshes Minadog, Mavarch, Ech, Mazoinois. That if there's a little bit of Chameshes Minadog, that becomes the Iker. So we say, ah, because it's, it's so we see from here two things said the Poiskim, the Rambam, and the Tur, that when two things are mixed together, then now there's a shail of Iker Betafu. And also we see when it's one of the Chameshes Minei Dagon, the Chameshes Minei Dagon, even if it's only a little bit, he, he becomes automatically the Iker because we know the Chazal Kaveya, Chazal tell us that the, the Chameshes Minei Dagon is the Iker. So therefore the Rambam says in Hilchas uh, Baruchas in the Tur, in Hilchas Baruchas in the Tur is in the beginning of Semer Eishu Beis. The Rambam is uh, in Pedic Beis in the Chazbroches that there is a culture Ikev Yim Etafel and Varech Likev Pites Etafel. Anytime you have Ikev Etafel, you make a Baruch Etika and you part of Etafel. But they break it down into two categories: Tefela Hamurevis and Tefela Sheinam Murevis. If the Etafel is mixed in or not mixed in. So he's saying it's a tag. What's the difference? In the Ikev Etafel, you make a Baruch Etika and you part of Etafel. Well, what's the difference? Oh, there's a big difference, and that's the key. That's a key to starting off the sugya right. This is a major key to start off the sugya right. When you have a ikar v'tafel that are not mixed one with the other, the only way, because they're not mixed one with the, with the other, what, why would I say if I eat one thing, one item, and five minutes later I eat a different item? Why would I say the second item is tafel to the first item? There are two things. I ate an apple. Five minutes later, I ate a banana. Make a... Uh, eight Sunday apple, five minutes later, he'll make um, a dumb and a banana. Eight jalapeno pepper, five minutes later, eat bread. Make a uh, dumb and jalapeno pepper, five minutes later, eat bread. Make a mites on the bread. Why would you think that one is tuffled to the other? The only way one is tuffled to the other is in the words of the Alta Rebbe, the way the Alta Rebbe formulates this. I would never If he didn't have the dish, he wouldn't have the shani. He, he's not interested in having bread. He ate an jalapeno pepper. And Mamela, his mouth is on fire. So yeah, the bread. But without the jalapeno pepper, he'd never have the bread. Agav Urcha, the Toysvist says uh, that the, the story in the Gemara is that the, the fruits were very sweet and therefore his heart became weak. And then he needed something sharp, but then his mouth is on fire, and then he takes a piece of bread. And the Rambam Pirish Mishnah talks about it a little bit with more sort of scientific lotion. The, the Rambam says when a person eats a lot of sweet things, there's more lecha, there's a lot of, there's too much moisture in the, in the stomach. And therefore a person gets pain, gets gases and pain from it. Therefore, people want to eat something sharp afterwards because the heat of the sharpness uh, evaporates the uh, the water in the in the stukma. Elamai later his mouth is a fire, so therefore he wants to eat or drink something to take out the fire in the tin of mouth. Um, okay, sorry, got sidetracked. Back to to to, to the uh, explaining what's the difference between ikar v'tafel if it's tefila moreves tefila l'sheina moreves if the tafel is mixed in and not mixed in if it's not mixed in the only way I can say it's tafel is by saying if the first one didn't come the second one would never come if I didn't eat the jalapeno pepper I would not eat this piece of bread never ever I push them I would rather if I could chew cardboard it's just that a cardboard is not edible so I have to eat bread even though there's calories and sugar in it I'm not interested in spending more time on the treadmill, my mouth is on fire, so I have to eat the bread. 
But otherwise, without the jalapeno, without the jalapeno pepper, I'd never eat the bread. And that's what makes them a tofu. But we have two things that are mixed with each other. We don't say that. It has to be. We don't say so. It doesn't have to be that extreme in order to make it. Look in the Alter Rebbe, Semination Beis, the first few lines. If the Tvela is Mureves and for sure, you make the Brach and the Iker. What is, what is the meaning of Tvela Mureves? You go and call Tarubas Beis, Minum Shech and Iker. Rabbi Nehemiah is a Shani and the Latak Nelach He has a fruit salad. They put a couple of onions, a garlic, instead of the fruit salad. If you have two things and you don't know what's the Iker, you want them both? You want them both? You don't know, you can't decide. So you say, So we say the Rav is probably the Iker. The Rav is the Iker, you make the Bracha on the Iker, and you part of the Tafel, you make the Bracha on the Rav. Oh, your third is, but the Rav is my Moshe's dog, and Shafil Mood, not Shavik. Over here, we don't say if the first one didn't come, the second one didn't come. You don't have to have such a such a high level of of of, of, of a bittle of the second to the first in order to say that this one is Iker and this is Tov. I think there's an unbelievable lesson here in Avodah Hashem. If I'm going to spend more hours of work, so I have to say, why am I why am I being mevatel toyda? Why am I spending more hours in my business? Why am I not sitting and learning Gemara? To say, because this money I have to spend in order to pay tuition to send my son to a better yeshiva. This money I'm, I'm, I'm spending in order to support a yeshiva. This uh, base medrish, a base aknesis, a base medrish, to give tzedakah, to do chesed, to help another yid, to feed a almona, a yosem, and so on. If, if I didn't need the money, I would not go to work. So therefore, really, the work is toffel to my avoidus Hashem. If I didn't, if, if, if I, if, why am I retaking a vacation now? Why am I relaxing? Because I'm, I'm, my mind is so fahitzed with learning all year and I need to have a break a little for my brain. So Mamela, it's necessary. I have to stretch my bones, Kilo. In Loiba edition, if not the Dav I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go on vacation. But now because the, my mind is so, it's like burning rubber, so therefore I have to take a little break. Loiba edition, Loiba Hashem. So now I know what I'm doing is L'shem Shemai. It really, the mundane things I'm doing is really toffled to the Iker. But then there is, when I'm doing at Var Mitzvah Mamish, I'm going on a Shlichus. We know from the Friedrich Rebbe that he was very makbid. Whenever he went on a, a Shlichus, that he, uh, he traveled first class. Traveled first class. If right now you're doing a Shlichus, and you don't have to ask, Im boy I'm, I'm a Shliach. From the Rebani I'm doing the Rebbe Shlichus. I have to go first class. Okay. Now, now let's talk about what happens if two things, they're not, they're not motive in a way that they're kotush, that they're grinded together, blended together. They're not blended together and they're not separate, but they're mixed, they're together. A fruit salad, chopped up apples and pears and and grapes and bananas and kiwis, a fruit salad or a regular salad. Today it's the derech that people have salads. And in the vegetable salad, they put in also pieces of fruit, mangoes, berries, all kinds of fruits that go into a salad. Or people have breakfast and in the leban or in the, in the, uh, the, the Greek yogurt, regular yogurt, they'll dump berries, pieces of apple, granola, so uh, what's the din? What's the din? There is a Mishnah uh, Baruda, and uh, you have it in Yamana Makarmas here at the beginning of Simon Reish Yud Beis. The Mishnah Baruda essentially brings that there's a machloikis about this. But there's a machloikis about this. He says, um, in, uh, he quotes Paiskim that say, uh, uh, um, that says they're mixed in one plate 
if he knows that Kavon is mainly on one, he makes the bracha in this one, a part is the other one. I feel who amu it or bistam. And if it's bistam, he wants both. He wants the apples, he wants the bananas. It's a salad. He wants the romaine lettuce and he wants the and he wants the uh, the berries and the nuts inside. He wants everything here. It's not that he wants one and not the other one. and <laughs> They're two separate things. There's apples and bananas. You can tell the apple from the bananas. You can tell the roaming lettuce from the berries. Today, there's a, there you go into a lot of uh, places that serve lunch. They have you can, you can get a thing of a serving of, of lettuce, and you have toppings. You can get four toppings, five toppings, six toppings. And some of them are yorokis, and some of them are peyros. Some of them are uh, mazoinas, pieces of uh, pretzels or uh, croutons and so on. You can end up with a brachas party in here. He says, "Why would you? Why would you count? Why would you say that you should go basaroiv? Or if there's a chamesh in a dog, then you should make a mazonis and pat to the rest? Why would you say such a thing?" He says, "No. You make a separate bracha in each one. You make a separate bracha. So if you have croutons, you make a mazonis, and then you have so you make a bayde mazonis with croutons, and you make a bayde priyates on the blueberries, and then you make a bayde priyadama on the romaine lettuce. Three brachas." Three separate brachas. The Mishnah Buddha says, no, if you have three things on a plate, four things on a plate, they're, they're together. You should, if you don't, if it's chamesh, uh, meaning make a mezayinus. If otherwise, you go with the majority. Um, and then the, the Mishnah Buddha says that the best thing is um, he said, he, he says that he should take a fork and mix it together. Then he eats and makes one brocha. If it's chamesh min adag, make mazaynas. Otherwise, he'll make a, uh, he'll, he'll go with the roiv. And if the roiv are eight, make eight. So if it's adam, he make adam. That's the shit of the Mishnah. Now, based on that, you, the, I, the, I see a sefer of a bracha sefer today who has a, a little bit of a problem. Uh, he say, he, say, he brings a chuba from uh, the Moshe. He gives Moshe who says, he does, he says uh, two separate things. He says, he make, uh, unless the only reason you're eating the milk is to, to waft down the cereal. If you're having more milk then it's necessary to waft down the cereal. He says, you make two separate brachas. You make Adama or Mazinus or whatever bracha on the cereal and shahakal on the milk. So they're mixed together. So I showed you the copy. The guy asked, it's not like the psak of the Mishnah Bruder. So he has a big problem and he's the psak hiddish and the difference. I don't see the difference. A solid and a solid, liquid and a solid. But why should it be different? But the MS is that um, the MS is that the Alter Rebbe has a middle shita. I sent you a copy of this uh, Sefer who didn't, I think, totally misunderstood the Alter Rebbe. Um, the Alter Rebbe has a middle shita. The Alter Rebbe has a, a, a middle shita. The Alter Rebbe holds like this. If two things are mixed together, but they're not crushed, they're not ketushim, they're not blended together, so then, they're two separate things. And if you don't know which is the ikar and which is the tofu, it means you want both. You have a fruit salad. You have apples chopped up and bananas chopped up in there. You make a bite of priya eights and an apple and a bite of priya dum and a piece of banana. You have a, a fruit salad. And in, uh, uh, or a vegetable, I'm sorry, vegetable salad inside, you dump a couple pieces of fruit, a couple of nuts, a couple of berries. So you take a spoon and fork, you take out the berry, you make a bite of priya eights, and then you make a hadama on the uh, on the on the on the salad. That's not a problem. And even if you already made a hadama on the salad, 
you can still make uh, later uh, eights. We're not going to say, oh, you already potted because he gets 90 kibbutz off. And same thing according to the Al Tareb, if you're going to have if you're going to have breakfast, you're going to have uh, a yogurt, and you're dumping the yogurt, uh, granola, and uh, fruits. So you make a bite of the eights and the fruit, and then a dumb on the granola, and then a shahakal on the yogurt. And the same thing according to the Al Tareb, uh, uh, similar to uh, the Psak that a Moshe function has an Igris, uh, igris Moshe. About the, uh, about the chocolate covered if he says, he says, uh, if, it's, if they're sugar coated, so then the broch is on the nut. And that would be true according to Alter for a different reason, as I'll explain anyway. But he says here, we should make two separate broches. We should make two separate broches for the chocolate. People like chocolate, people like raisins, people like nuts, people like chocolate. Make two separate broches. And uh, that would be very good with the Alter Rebbe. So, same thing with cereal and milk. You make, unless you take only very little amount of milk in order to waft down the cereal, you make two separate brachas. You make a hadama or a mezainus on the cereal and make a shakal on the milk. That's what the Alter Rebbe makes very clear. However, is like the Alter Rebbe, two things that are not blended together. They're not kushim zayim zeh. However, they were cooked. They were nizabashal zayim zeh. Oh, once they were cooked, two things that were cooked, the cooking process makes it into one mitzis, into one chefz. And now, even if you want both equally, uh, you, uh, uh, you will go with the roiv, with the majority. So therefore, according to the Alter Rebbe, um, uh, sh- sugar glazed, any glazed nuts, they're cooked together. So hayoyz, they're cooked together. Even if you're not sure, there's a machloik, is a place game, and I show it. What's the ikir? Is the sugar the ikir or the nuts the ikir? But according to the Alter Rebbe, they're roasted together, and the roiv is the nuts. So you make kites, and the pot is also the sugar. Is no shaila. But chocolate covered uh, raisins, chocolate covered nuts, they melt the chocolate, but they don't cook the raisins in the chocolate. They don't cook the nuts in the chocolate. They pour the melted the chocolate over the nuts. And they pour the melted chocolate over the raisin. Maybe it has a shail of eater miklidishim, but that's not real bishul. Maybe it's mavashal could they clip it, but the negayat is of a heter. But pashtas, they're not, that's not called nizbashal. They're not cooked together. They're not cooked together. So therefore, they're two separate things, two separate things. And you want chocolate, you want raisins. You want the chocolate, you want the nuts. You make two separate brachas. You want the, you want the Greek yogurt, you want the berries, you want the granola. You like to mix it together. You make three separate brachas. You like the vegetables in the salad. You like the fruits in the salad. You make two separate brachas. Unless they were cooked together. Unless they were cooked together. Unless they were cooked together. Let's uh, read it in the Alter Rebbe Shulchan Aruch in Simon Reish Dalit. Let's read it. I sent it to my famous. The last two Sifim in the Alter Rebbe Shulchan Aruch, Simon Eilchas Berchus Ben Adam, Simon Reish Dalit. So the Alter Rebbe Dvash Shabishli Mina Besamim Ketushim Kedei Lavas Make Mina Gol Chidroch. A person that cooks honey. With uh, crushed besamim, uh, the spices. Those pe- those days, people were on the road. They needed some a uh, uh, candy or a snack, like uh, sort of to carry them through the day if they didn't have any food with them. So we say the m- main thing is they want a candy. The main thing is the dvash. Because um, the besamim here, he put ginger in here to give it a ginger taste, but it's a candy. The main thing is he wants the dvash, he makes a shahakal. What happens if a person wants to preserve fruits? He wants to preserve fruits, so therefore he cooks them with honey. That's the original thing of jams. A jam, what were jams? They didn't have refrigerators. So they want to preserve fruits. So they would cook it with honey. So we're saying even if uh, the bed, the jam, you don't see so much the berries or the fruits anymore. 
and the roiv is the honey. I don't care. Even there's more dvash than apples, and even if the apples are crushed, but we, we the, the honey is only here as a preservative for the apples in the refrigerators. Those days so they preserve that jars with preserved apples, with preserved berries. From them is you come varenya. You know what varenya is? From them is you come varenya. Now today is a little different. When the children, when the children are, you're giving them a cracker and you put on some uh, jelly, it's a peanut butter and jelly. So um, we'll talk about the bracha peanut butter another time. But let's talk about the jelly. So the chayda for an adult, the, 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 what does the adult want? He wants fruit, su- sweetened fruit. But for the children, so it's a, it's a, it, it depends what kind of fruit. If it's a, if it's a. a if it's uh, strawberries, we make adama strawberries. So you make a, on the jam, you make adama. For children, it's only a hechetim, so harit sugar. The ikir is the sugar. So yeah, a child would make shahakul ne'e bedvare l'chayra. Okay, let's continue. Bamed, v'onim amorim, bamed kachas. Shiasur l'kim l'echlam anamat mat brokim. This is when it's cooked as a makachas, which is a preservative. The, the honey is a preservative. Even though the dvash is the right, but it's a preservative, so he becomes tough. But if you have cooking something, and there's not one of the chamesh mini dog, because if there was chamesh mini dog inside, automatically he be chamesh mini dog and wins the brach, like Shabbos Shmuel said, cold sheish by chamesh mini dog. If you have one of the five grains, he wins and it becomes a mazainus. Yeah, look, go and pay this the kidneys. If there's paytas and kidneys, there's there's uh, dom and eights mixed together. So over there, you want both. You want the apples, you want the bananas. Now You go with the roiv. I feel even if they're not crushed and mixed one with the other. Because they were cooked together, they become one cheft. They become one cheft. They become one tafshil. That we look, what's the majority? Because this whole mixture, this whole pot became one cheft. So majority rules. Mine doesn't count as a roiv here. Abol im loin is bashlu yachad. If they were not cooked together, beir v'olech yachad, and they were mixed together, ah, in el chemacharayv. Then you don't go with the roiv. You have to make two separate brachas. To make two separate brachas. You have to make two separate brachas. You have to make two separate brachas. You have to make two separate brachas. But if they were crushed together, then even if they weren't cooked, you would go basaroid. So the mile of cooked is that they don't have to be crushed together. Even if afila enim ktushim uravim ima, even they're not crushed together, even if they're not crushed together, they're not blended together. If they're cooked, they become tavshil echod, and hoilchim basaroid, we go with the roiv. Unless, you know one of them chamesh mini daga, or you know clearly that one is the and one is the tough, and one is the preservative, and one is the main thing. But if it's not, if if it's not one of chamesh mini daga, or it's not that you know what's the and what's the tough, you go basaroy. If you go with the majority, that's if they're cooked together. That's if they're cooked together. But if they're not cooked together, if they're crushed, so again you go you go and uh, so again if it's chamesh mini daga zionist. If the zikr a tuffle, you know one is to preserve the other, so the preservative is the tuffle. If you don't, you go with the majority. But if none of the above, you like them both, you make two separate brachas. So therefore, in the Alta Nebbe, it's clear what the din is. Anything that is not cooked, like today, so you go into for lunch, all these salad bars, they give you like a, a, a dish with salad and you get four toppings, six toppings, eight toppings, right? And among them, they could have croutons, which are mazainas. They could have fruits and berries that are eights. And then they could have stuff that are uh, adama. And then they could have cheese and eggs, which are shahakul, 
right? So you could have a brachas party here. You could have four brachas here, according to the Alter Rebbe. And there's no shyness. 100%, you make four separate brachas, 100%. Your breakfast, you have your cereal and milk, like, like he says in the Gis Moshe. Unless you're only drinking a, a, the, enough milk to waft down the cereal, you make two separate brachas, one on the milk and one on the cereal. You're having uh, Greek yogurt or lemon, and you dump in there uh, berries and uh, granola, you make three brachas, so eight, Adam and shahaku. Chocolate covered nuts, chocolate covered raisins, two separate brachas, eight, and the shahakal, because we make shahakal on chocolate. Um, then there is uh, the same What's thing the with the... Uh, huh? There is not an ikir. I like the banana, I like the uh, apple. Well, why ikir? There is no ikir I'm at the, I'm at the chocolate covered nuts. Why, it grows on trees? People like chocolate and people like nuts. Why should one be the ikir and one be the tuffle? People like chocolate, people like nuts. Sometimes I eat nuts until I go nuts, and sometimes the chocolate, until I go crazy. And sometimes they make a shidduch between the chocolate That's and the nuts, one. because they're both good. Shneim ke'echet toivim. Shneim ke'echet toivim. They're both good. But, uh, but they're not cooked together. But if they were really processed together, like glazed nuts that are processed together, so then, because they're processed together, they're cooked together, they're roasted together, over there you go with the roiv, you go with the majority. Even though you like the glaze separately and you like the nuts separately, you go with the majority and you make eights. Most fruits are eights. Uh, fruit, uh, nuts, uh, besides peanuts, are adama. There is an exception. They have some glazed nuts that are glazed with, uh, with flour. With flour. It is an Israeli product. They make it in several flavors. Uh, they sometimes try to serve it hot. Now that is chamesh mine dogon, and it was roasted together, even if the nut is the roiv, like so you make a bracha mezoinus, and that's it, and that part is the whole thing. So let me summarize. Let me summarize. We have, again, the Mishnah says, We have two types of Iker and Tafel situation. One is Tfela Mureves and Tfela Sheinam Mureves. When they're separate, it has to be that the second one is only here because the first one. I'm only eating bread because of jalapeno pepper. When they're mixed together, they're blended. So then, if one is a preservative or giving a taste, he becomes tafel or bottle. If one is the mute, he becomes tafel or bottle. Or if it's chamesh minute dog, and everything becomes bottle to the chamesh minute dog. And that's also, if they're cooked together, they don't have to be crushed. But if they're not cooked together and they were chopped up and they're together on a plate, you make, you make everyone a separate brocha. So it can be a salad, you make four brochas. It can be a breakfast, a bowl with leaven and, uh, and granola and fruits. So you make three brochas, a cereal and milk. If, if you didn't put uh, just a little milk to waft down the cereal. Make two separate brachas. Chocolate covered raisin, chocolate covered nuts. They make two separate brachas. If they were cooked together, oh, they were roasted together. Then you go with the roiv, or it's chameshes mini dogen, like those uh, like those uh, flour covered peanuts. Then you would make a bite of minimizinus. Again, as I said before, you have to. There's two types of tafel hamurevis when they're mixed. And they become one mitzias, either because they're crushed or because they're cooked together, or they're two separate. When the ikav tafel, I ate the jalapeno pepper in five minutes. I ate later. I ate the bread. When if in five minutes later I eat the bread, it has to be that a mamish tafel bottle. I would never eat the bread without the jalapeno pepper. And again, the, I think there's an unbelievable lesson here in Avodas Hashem. If you're going to work, you're going to do uvdin the choil. You have to know that without the davke mora. Without the Pedic Rambam, without the Sechta Gemara, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. If I really, if I, if I won a lottery ticket, I wouldn't go out and work. I'd close the business. I'd sit in Koyal all day. Uh, anything I do in life is L'Shem Shemayim because I, 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 need, I need to exercise in order to be healthy. I need to take a vacation in order to, for, I need a fresh air from my head to open to, 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 and, and, and dominating and learning. If, if, if not the Avodah Sashem, I wouldn't do the Uvd in the Chayl. I'm only doing the Uvd in the Chayl in order to do Avodah Sashem. So therefore, it's L'Shem Shemayim. Mevorech al-Ikar apoyter is atfeila. My entire life, like the Ramam said, Nechaz Deyus, is dedicated to Avodah Sashem. 
even my eating and my drinking and my sleeping and even intimacy is in order to serve Hashem. Is everything is to serve Hashem. I eat in order to have koyach, to dive and to learn. And even, uh, even intimacy is in order to serve Hashem. But what, these are when two things are separate. When there's a jalapeno pepper, five minutes later, the bread. So you have to know that the bread would never be here without the jalapeno pepper. I would never take this vacation if I don't need to open my brain to learn Gemara, to learn Apedic Rambam, to learn Apedic uh, Mishnais, to learn Apedic Tanya. But when it's Tfei Lakitush in Murabi Mimoy, it's Nizba Shalimoy, I'm now going on Shlichis to make out of another Yid. You travel first class. So Nishkin Shaila. If I wouldn't be going on Shlichis, would I do? First class. Because right now I'm shlichus shalakam shbarucham and the Rebbe shlichus, I have to go first class, and that's the way every yid should be going his entire life. And that's the way yidin should go in to chaydish elu, because melech is basada, and now is the time to go out. That's the ikkar really. The ikkar of chaydish elu we have to know is to greet the melech in the sada and to find the melech, and definitely the melech is going to shine to us and save upon him yofus and upon him shaychikus and grant us all our requests. Have a ksiva vachsima toiv and a shana toiv om sukha. Thank you, Rabbi, and I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, can don't I, worry. Can I read the Hayom Yom? Gesundheit, uh, anyone that wants to stay, there is uh, David's going to read the Hayom Yom. And the Abish shall help him talk it, it will sign a gesundheit chaydish and a lebitik chaydish and a lustik chaydish and a ksiva vachsima toiv and a shana toiv om sukha. Amen. The floor is yours. I, I just want to want to preface it by saying that last night I saw the gem video. You know, they send the new gem video, and the gem video online was um, an interview with uh, 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 Rav Steinsoltz, uh, Allah Shalom, and uh, about the Rebbe, about his relationship with the Rebbe. And one of the things he said, obviously, that you would all know, is that everything you hear from the Rebbe is um, Hashkocha Pratis. And so uh, keep that in mind when I say the Ayom Yom for Chavav Menachem Av. Uh, from a public talk of my revered father, the Rebbe Rashab, part of the Hasidic Exodus from Egypt is a mitzvah to recount the story of the Exodus from Egypt verbally. This means telling Hasidic stories and listening and internalizing them in one's innermost self. One should realize that every story offers a directive for our lives. Every story ought to refine our character, pro produce inner gusto in the loving performance of mitzvot, and to sensitize us to perceive the pleasantness of the teachings of Hasidus. The art of storytelling has always characterized Hasidic communities and continues to serve as a catalyst in the spiritual maturation of every Hasid. Indeed, the Alter Rebbe once recalled when we used to hear a Torah discourse from the Rebbe, the Magid of Mezrich, we saw this as the oral law. But I'll pass. And when we heard a story from his mouth, this was our written Torah, our written law. Like the stories of the Tanakh, the written law, Hasidic stories, are living Torah, multi-dimensional expressions of divine truth. Moreover, these truths are expressed not as theoretical principles, but as reactions and guideposts to our day-to-day -day experience. In the words of Reb Shlomo, Yosef, Zevin, who apparently, I, I, I got the impression, was one of the teachers of Rabbi Steinsaltz, it can be fairly said that the doctrines of Hasidism are the halacha of Hasidism. And the stories of Hasidism are its agada. The agada of Hasidism with its stories of the road builders and trailblazers of the Hasidic movement, the tzaddikim, their lives and deeds, 
attitudes and attributes, their customs and their conduct, their words and their wonders. This agada of stories rouses the heart, revives the soul, and breathes the spirit of life into the driest of its um, bones. All right, that's it. Oh, thank you, thank you. You're welcome, you're welcome. It does say in the notes, by the way, that every individual's obligation to free himself from his private, spiritual, and psychological house of bondage, everyone has that obligation. And um, uh, anyway, I just thought I would throw that in. Thank you for listening. <laughs>